Sound design. Live. All right, let's go through a crossover alignment together and let's do it step by step. So I want to make several short videos so if you ever have questions about this stuff, it'll be easy for you to find it by searching on YouTube or searching in Google. So the first question I want to cover is, um, why do you not want to limit your test signal? My friend Bryce sent me some measurements here. And first I want to say thank you very much, Bryce. Um, if you're interested, this is, let me close this. These are his speakers that he built himself. Um, he's got some plans here for these speakers. Um, they look very cool and so you're probably looking back here and you're like wow where is this place that this guy is working this looks beautiful is this some tropical island you are correct this is a, a little island um, called new caledonia and if you're wondering where this is i'll slowly zoom out and you can see how far do i have to zoom out before you can guess where this is okay there's fiji so to the west we've got australia and then there's new zealand down there so it's way out there so i think it's pretty cool um, that bryce sent these to me and i just wanted to say thank you before we get started okay so he sent me these measurements and i'm looking at these and i'm like um why did he limit these i guess this makes sense because if you're looking at the operating range of your drivers and it says something like oh this operates from uh i don't know 40 hertz to 200 hertz you might think oh when i take my measurement all i need to really measure is like 30 to 300 or something like that um, and that might make sense at first but here's the problem one of the first things i want to do is just look at these drivers and see what their natural roll-off is right so that I can start thinking about what filters might work there. So let me show you over here in Crosslight. So I have exported these measurements and imported them into Crosslight where I can um, do some more tests and some simulations. So one of the first things I might do is just insert a low pass filter just on top of here so I can see um, what the roll off is here. And if I put a 12 dB per octave Butterworth filter, um, this just gives me a quick overview to say, okay, the natural roll off of this speaker, just because of the way it's physically built, um, there is kind of this band pass uh, response here where we can see a roll off in the low end, a roll off in the high end without any filters inserted because Bryce took these measurements just straight out of an amp with, with no processor and no filters. But as you can see, it, it's not super easy to look at because it stops at 300 hertz. And, you know, I can kind of see with my eyes that there's this natural progression here that would have kept going down this way if the measurement would have continued. Um, but it would just be nicer to actually have that information. And it would also make the impulse response a little bit easier to look at. Um, and so I have some questions now, like, is this really correct? I'm not quite sure. So this is just a short video to say, you know, when you're doing these measurements, even if you're just measuring a single driver or a subwoofer, um, you know, go ahead and measure the entire range. There's really um, no reason I meant to make that 20,000. There's really no reason um, to limit this just because you think it goes beyond the operating range. Um, so when in doubt, we want as much information as possible. Okay. Sound design. Yeah.